Hello, I'm Ethel Andrews. Welcome to Good Libations, which is our program about mixology, about truly fine bartending and adventures in cocktails. And as with a previous show, we're going to talk about cocktails that originated in, of all places, the British Isles. And who would expect that you'd have um, fine cocktails that came from Great Britain? But I was very impressed that many of your upscale establishments are starting to get very adventurous with cocktails. In fact, they're starting to surpass some of the eminent mixologists here in the United States. And mainly the cities of London, Glasgow, Manchester, Birmingham, and Liverpool, and also Edinburgh are the, the sources for some of those fine cocktails. And of course in Ireland, obviously Dublin and Belfast in Northern Ireland. But I was impressed because this is a country that is thought of as being mostly a country of people who imbibe ale and stout and porter. But things are really changing there. And on a previous show, we did drinks that were based on Campari. And the British people have a real appreciation for Campari, like their appreciation for tequila. And of course, Negronis are popular there and some of the variant drinks that are based on Campari. And we're actually going to do a drink today that originated in the British Isles that is known as a Margarita Negroni or a Tequila Negroni. And again, you're going to be surprised with this drink. So I'm going to go ahead and proceed to make it. And it's conventional in the sense that it has many of the elements of the Margarita and many of the elements of the Negroni all combined into one. But the result is really quite good. So what we're going to do is, first of all, with this particular drink, we're going to go ahead because we're not going to do any muddling. And we're going to put ice in the shaker, first of all. And we are going to use a conventional margarita glass for this drink also. So here goes the ice. And now we'll proceed on with the other ingredients. So we're going to go ahead and add a bit of triple sec, just a hint of it, because orange flavor goes not only well with margaritas, but also with Negronis and drinks based on Campari, because Campari has a bitter orange overtone to it. There's other nuances in there too, like there's vanilla and cherry accents. But what we want to pick up today is the orange. And then we're going to add a modest tequila again. And we're going to proceed on with the Campari. Again, this is how you would make a, a Negroni. And then, last of all, we're going to add the sweet vermouth, the Italian vermouth, as it's known as. Just a hint of it, not an overwhelming amount of it. And now, as we would typically do with a margarita, we're going to go ahead and add some lime. Not as much as we would for a conventional margarita probably about a quarter more. And boy, these are nice limes. At first I, I had some trepidation about them because they looked a bit on the um, dark side on the skin, which usually means that they don't produce a lot of juice, but they're absolutely redolent with the scent of limes. And they do produce nice amounts of juice, which I'm gratified to see. Yeah, this particular drink is quite interesting because it combines the best of the two. And I think I'll add the spent shell to that. And also we add orange to this drink, which we would ordinarily do with a Negroni as well. So here it goes into the drink. Play off that bitter orange taste. And if they're available and in season, it's interesting, too, if you use 
um, blood oranges if you can source them easily because that adds a nice extra touch to this particular drink. I'm a bit drenched in the orange here, so I'm gonna go ahead and wipe my hands. And always remember, as we've endlessly talked about, that hand squeezing of the fruit is important because you're getting the oils from the peel in there when you do that. So we're gonna go ahead and shake this drink and then dispense it into the margarita glass. Yep, this is a uh, margarita or tequila Negroni. The best elements of Campari and tequila. And if you will remember, the Boulevardier uses bourbon. So why not use tequila? And this was thought up by the British again, so I thought that was quite adventurous of them to do this. And this drink too, because of the Campari and the vermouth, has a nice pinkish red overtone to it. And for a garnish, we're gonna do what we typically do and add a bit of orange and a bit of lime. And then we're gonna give this a taste to see if it lives up to the hype. It looks very pretty. And oh, it tastes very good. It's really interesting. Um, this is almost to me an improvement on a conventional Negroni. Adding the tequila adds a different dimension to it that I actually like very much. Makes it more complex, makes it more interesting. And somehow it kind of improves the concept too of a margarita. Because unfortunately in America, we tend to have gotten into the stereotype of making margaritas and sunrises and pitiful few other variants on tequila drinks. And to think that they're more adventurous overseas about it is quite remarkable. But yeah, I really like this drink. This is very good, a good balance of ingredients. The best of a Negroni and the best of a Margi. And again, it's pretty simple. You just use a hint of triple sec, a decent tequila, but not an overly expensive one. And then you add Campari and sweet vermouth, fresh orange and fresh lime, and shake it and dispense it into the conventional margarita glass. And it is very, very nice. Now, one of the first establishments in Britain to start making adventurous cocktails was Trader Vic's at the London Hilton. And you can get this particular drink there too. But starting back in the 1960s of all times, um, Trader Vic's became very popular in Britain. And that one in London at the London Hilton is very heavily populated by Brits and by tourists alike. And they also have steel drum bands that perform in there and interesting jazz acts as well. So never underestimate the Brits when it comes to cocktails and good libations because they certainly are getting into them, which I very much admire. And again, as I always make mention of in our show, let's always drink sensibly and responsibly and show respect for our community and also for the mixologists, because if you just are downing somebody's drinks, that's not a compliment. It's like just inhaling the food when somebody makes you a gourmet meal. Take time to savor and to really enjoy, to pick up the nuances, to educate your palate, to try new liquors, to make it yourself at home and not feel intimidated by the process because you would be surprised at hidden abilities and talents that you have and an educated palate that you might not even know that you possess. So keep trying and keep the sense of adventure. And again, I'm Ethel Andrews. This is our program about mixology, good libations. And this is kind of a tribute to the bartending skills in the United Kingdom. So thank you again for tuning into our program and we will see you next time. I'm Ethel Andrews, I'm a mixologist. Goodbye.